This video is part of the course that is build reactive rest apis with spring webflux and spring boot link for the course is given in the description hello and welcome back in the previous lecture we have seen four interfaces now to work with reactive programming we need implementation of this four interfaces and that's what reactive libraries provide there are couple of reactive libraries available for java programming language the first is project reactor another one is rx java and jdk9 itself provides reactive streams in this course we will use project reactor the reason is that it is recommended to use project reactor with spring boot so in this course we will go with the project reactor but you can explore other libraries yourself so that is completely up to you but in this course we will go with the project reactor library if you like the video then please subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell like the video do comment in the comment section and share with your friends do you want to learn reactive programming with spring webflux if yes then i am having complete course on it in this course first you will learn what is reactive programming and why you need to go for reactive programming you will learn basics of reactive programming with project reactor library and also you will learn reactive types flux and mono with practical example this course covers what is back pressure and how to achieve back pressure using reactive programming in this course you will learn different schedulers provided by reactive programming to perform task asynchronously after having the basic knowledge of reactive programming you will learn how to build reactive rest apis with spring webflux and spring boot you will learn how to have functional endpoint for your reactive rest apis and also you will learn how to get path variable query param and http headers while working with functional endpoints for your reactive rest apis you will learn to build non blocking rest apis with spring webflux and spring data r2dbc using different http methods like get put post and delete here spring data r2dbc is used to connect to any sql database in a reactive way just want to mention that you can't use spring data jpa while working with reactive programming and that's why spring data r2dbc is there for the same purpose in this course you will learn to create video streaming application just like youtube using reactive rest apis and spring webflux so what are you waiting for link for the course is given in the description just click on that and start building reactive rest apis with spring webflux and spring boot that's all for now we'll see you in the another video till then happy learning and happy coding